I am going to change a little bit the thing and going to go to start by underlining a point that, that Professor Jamas made, which is the globalization of the issues of water. Um, not long ago, I think, you know, there was uh, this uh, phrase and paradigm that, uh, that uh, any sustainable type of development should start with, a, you know, kind of the 11th commandment of the, of the law of God saying, you know, water, should be kept on the basin, you know. Uh, el manejo de la cuenca significa el agua en la cuenca. That's a lot of baloney. I mean, whenever you take water out of any river for anything, I mean, what is a watershed? What is a basin? A basin inside of a basin of a basin of inside of a basin. I mean, t t basins are system nested one into each other. How do you find the basin scale and we you will say, I'm going to do management at that scale. The fact of life nowadays, as Professor Jama pointed out, is, is it's a global thing. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's, an, it's, it's, it's a global system. Some of you may have, it's very common to see nowadays, the network, the internet network, you know, in which you see different nodes. You are one of them, each one of you is one of them, in which there is a lot of connections between the hits, between each nodes. You have seen these pictures? of the internet network, and, uh, and uh, you quantify the importance of a node by the number of hits that the node has. Can you guess which is the most important node nowadays in the internet? You know, I would have said Google until recently. Now is um, the thing in which everybody except myself is Facebook, okay? Uh, and now it's Facebook. Facebook is the most important one. Second is Noodle, but they are, they are very close there. I mean, they, those are big, big nodes. It is the same thing with water. There is transfer of water between every country in the world. And you know, sometimes a country trades with many, sometimes a country trades with very few of them. And there is importation and exportation of water. Now, where is that water contained? In the food that is traded mainly. It's also contained in industrial products and things like cotton products or, or steel or whatever. But mainly, and the most important one for many issues I'm going to discuss, just in terms of quantitative transfers, is in the food that is done. That, uh, that. So that's where the concept of virtual water comes in. The virtual water is the embedded amount of water that a, a particular product has on it. You know, when you eat a, a pound of beef, a kilogram, a hamburger, whatever, that meat came from a cow. The cow ate some, what's the name, hay, eno. And that eno consumed water. The water may be of two kinds, directly from the rain to the ground, taking my soil moisture and transpire. The amount that the plant transpire is the embedded water in the product that is going to be produced by the plant. And it's done through several growing seasons until the plant is disposed of as an agricultural product that is chopped or as the, the cow eats the thing. But there's an embedded water on it. That's the green water. The blue water is the same thing, but it's coming from irrigation type of channels, from dams, et cetera, et cetera. That's the difference between green water and blue water. is an important one. And, but that is it comes to the virtual water. So when you trade food, what is the main component of water nowadays, of the trade of water is in the food, is in the agricultural thing, 70%, 75%, whatever. I mean, at the global level. Uh, that's where the main thing is. Now, in the moment you visualize this, that's why you immediately see the point that Professor Jan was making, which is, hey, this is a global system. And you have to create your opportunities in the thing that you have a competitive advantage. The old paradigm using his war, and I'm changing what I had prepared, but I was listening to this, let's insist on this. The old paradigm which you say, oh, you have to produce what you need to consume in order to be self-sufficient doesn't work anymore. Not only doesn't work at the global level, but it doesn't work at the local level either. Now this presents a lot of challenges with analyzing the system. 
But when you, uh, you know, if you look at the global level, you say, okay, United States, for example, is a very important node in the, in, in the trade and uses in the network of virtual water. It's kind of the Google there, I mean, in terms of import and export of water. Especially the middle part of the United States is, is, is a wonderful thing, you know. People say, say, the external debt is, is all connected of the United States with China. It's enormous in terms of, of the loans, you know, of the, of the bonds of the external debt of the United States and mainly China. Yes, you know, they have that. But on the other hand, you know, most of the food of China is coming from the United States. So, you know, it is, these policy issues are extremely linked. With, with the issues of virtual water too, is a trade. But the point I want to insist, this is a fascinating topic by itself, is that it's a global issue. Now, when you have a network like that, in which you can imagine, imagine that I don't have the, because I didn't have that prepared, when you have a network in which different countries, say 180 countries or whatever you are considering, usually in our model we consider, I think, 178. But it depends, okay? And you see it starting the R, or some of them are very thick. For example, United States to Japan, that's a thick thing of virtual water going this way, okay? From exportation of food. And, uh, you know, Brazil to China, another thick one. You see all those arrows coming in. You immediately say, hey, this is a global system. And the question here is what this global system depends on? Well, what is the structure of that network? In internet, you know, this type of problem doesn't surprise you much. You say, you are accustomed to see these things going on, and you say, what happens if terrorism hits, you know, a particular uh, uh, node? You know, if somebody tomorrow, not terrorism, you get crazy, and Google disappears. What, what, what happens then in the, in the network of information? That's a big hit, huh? In terms of social relationships, you take out right now, what is the name of the land thing? Facebook. Oh, God almighty, you know, a lot of people are going to go into crisis there. I refuse to be part of Facebook for other reasons. I, I, I feel uncomfortable they're putting my life in there, what the hell is it? But anyway, I know every, everybody does it. My kids do it, my grandchildren also do it, everybody does it. Anyway, water, the, the virtual throat of water is like this. And it's an extremely important to mathematically describe the structure of that network. And to be able to say how the structure of the network will change if by any reason I change or alter some node properties or I take out a particular node, a particular node I can take out and in fact have been taken out in the past. Remember the fires in Russia in 2010? The fires produced was hydrologically driven, was an extreme drought. I'm not talking that center, 2010. And then there were a lot of fires Russia found itself that it has to control the internal prices of wheat or it will have internal turmoil. What the Russia did, any other country would have done, say, I close the exportation of wheat. Well, Russia was one of the great exporters of wheat at that moment, with the United States and others, okay? There were three of them, United States, Russia, I think Australia was the third one. Anyway, they cut it. That node for the virtual water, sorry, for the trade of wheat is gone. So it produces immediately a rearrangement, has to produce the rearrangement, was an important node on the virtual trade of water. Can you predict that? Because that's policy. And you will not be able to do that if you don't understand the structure of that network. So it's a complex network, self-adapts in some sense. And the nodes are weighted. And you have two types of network, the export network, the import network, the sum of the two, which is the total trade the country has. And you also have the total water network, the blue water network, and the green water network, if you want to differentiate between them. So we are not talking about, you know, things that may happen or not. Then you have policy decisions. That was nature-driven, the case of Russia. But you have policy decisions. That's only, for example, the case of China and soy. Soya? Oh? Whatever. Okay, soy. And in the case of soy, until 2004, China decided we are going to only consume the soy that is produced in China. 
So at the global, at, I'm sorry, at the whole level of the country, something that China can do, it's a very centralized type of policy, that the United States cannot do. And that also brings very interesting questions. In the case, in 2004, they say, no way, we need more soy. Why soy is so important? Soy is extremely important, not by itself, because it increases the amount of proteins the cattle produce when the feeding of the cattle has soy into it. So the thing was, let's add soy to the feeding of the cattle in order to increase our meat type of production because our consumption of meat is changing in China very rapidly from vegetarian, only where, you know, pig, how do you say that, uh, pork or whatever, you know, it's, it's increasing very that. So they lifted the importation of soy. What did it happen in the global network of water, of virtual water? Immediately, two countries, three countries became into play very important roles in that particular aspect. The whole thing had to reorganize because now, well, there are a lot of Chinese in China and then, you know, they need a heck of, immediately, the thing went, Argentina, in this disorder, Brazil, Argentina, Argentina very specifically because it has become almost a monoculture type of country. It has, now it's soy, 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 because the price of soy went through the roof. So people started changing the different farms into soy, which also has big consequences, okay, for a country because it becomes almost a monoculture. Brazil started to produce more and more soy to export where? Mainly to China. The United States increases exportation of soy to China too. So that immediately can be a rearrangement caused by a policy decision. How to link quantitatively as much as possible because policy, a lot of the policy things are good knows and politicians acting, okay? But how to try to ensemble some political models, political behavior type of model, policy type of models at the world level with this virtual water network is extremely important. And it's a challenge. One minute? All right. Let me, I won't even try to this, to do this. Zero minutes. Let, let me use this. Uh, okay, let me just, uh, oh, look at this. This was the usual presentation. <laughs> okay, to give you an amount, just I always like this, you know, is how much water do you think you are consuming in this virtual water type of thing? These are enormous amounts. When you take a kilogram of beef, you are consuming of the order of 15,000 liters of water. One could argue, you know, what does that mean or does it mean, but it's a fact because the cow has to grow from you was a cow for whatever, very little to large, after that has to be clean, has to be exported, and wheat and rice, rice is about 2,000, et cetera, et cetera. So the amounts of water embedded, this is what is called virtual water, and the different products is fantastic. But this an area, my presentation was going a different way, but what the hell, I already used my time on this. I think it's a fascinating topic. It's a fascinating topic, and it gives, you know, it, it has room for you, both for those people that are more interested in policy type of decision and economic type of analysis, and also from the hydrology point of view, you know, what is the impact of different climate change scenarios in the production on different parts of the world, and the rain, rain, blue, uh, uh, green water, in the productivity of different type of products, and how does that impact the network? The globalization of water has become, you know, it has wonderful things because it avoids many things, but also produces a challenge to understand and to take advantage of that, which is not easy in order to model, okay? But this, let me leave it like that because I could start talking and Nino will kill me. Thank you very much.